Greetings and welcome back to From the Depths, where several things have changed rather dramatically, rather too soon, if you ask me. Uh, to cover some of the changes I have implemented myself, I've upgraded the engine, rather than uh, have you sit here with me while I upgraded it on uh, camera, I've just gone ahead and upgraded it to the more efficient design that we covered in the previous episode. You will notice, however, that uh, I've gone ahead and I've put a engine block at the front and back of the engine. Now, this was suggested to me in comments, and it's a remarkably good idea. With one large engine, if uh, a bullet or a missile something managed to saw the engine in half, previously that meant that we would have basically half an engine, minus whatever blocks had also been blown off from each half. However, with this engine block over here, it does nothing. It's producing barely any power at all. Uh, in fact, it might not be producing any... Oh, 0 0.1. Well, you know, we can forgive it for that. But uh, what will happen now is if something were to saw this engine in half, then that engine block over there would simply pick up the slack from this half of the engine. So I, instead of having one very large, efficient engine, I'd have two smaller, slightly damaged engines. That is still a, a benefit, I feel. But the big change that you can probably guess is, unfortunately this. We have automatically updated. Now, a couple of people in the comments on my previous video had been asking, how do I get the update? Uh, I, I can't seem to, to download it, won't download. Well, the update comes from, or, or did, from activating the development branch of the uh, game through Steam, and then it would download the in-development patch. Now, every time you come out of the map, this happens. It's a little bit disconcerting. Um, however, at any point during your descent from the heavens, you can just hit tab and it'll go back to first person view. I strongly recommend just doing that straight away. So map, out of map, tab. There you are. No, no shenanigans. But uh, it is kind of nice to watch the first two or three times, but uh, considering how often I go into the map, that's probably going to melt my brain. Now, the problem with this is this whole thing here, I was thinking that I would have time to record on the old system the episode. As you know, I haven't been particularly well, so I wanted to, you know, there were certain things that I just thought, ah, oh, I'll put it off for now. I, I don't need to record it right away. Well, more fool me, I suppose, because it seems that whatever bugs were in the development branch must have been fixed. There were quite a few, apparently, quite big game crashy bugs. And uh, for some reason, that has now just been pushed flat out to everyone on Steam. Either that, or in some sort of drug-fueled, cold-induced stupor, I went ahead and upgraded to the development branch without remembering. I, I wouldn't put it past me, though I don't think that's what happened. Right, so, I am going to change my plans. I'm going to end this campaign on this video. That is, that is still going to be the case. Unfortunately, our forces are just not designed for, for the way that this works. We Our main combat potential comes from our fortress, and that is not a good idea. Um, you can see things moving around. I'm not going to hang around in this, though, for too long, because I don't want to explore too much of the new features of the campaign outside of actually playing in that campaign. So we're going to make a beeline for the deep water guard <clears throat> excuse me i'm still a little bit croaky um the deep water guard fortress in this episode and win or lose we're gonna end the campaign there if we win i will consider it a victory over the campaign if we lose well blaze of glory that's kind of what we wanted now before we do that we are going to make some adjustments i said i would build a laser and i'm going to i was going to do something a little bit more elaborate i was going to move the cannon from there, down here, I even got rid of the uh, torpedo system in preparation before I realized everything had been upgraded. I have upgraded the engine specifically for the purpose of building a laser. I was going to build a laser where this is. I, I even have an idea for a, kind of a, an interesting looking laser turret design. It was going to have a little way to walk in there and actually sit in the turret and stare out of a window. It was, it was going to be grand. But we're going to scale that back. Also... Uh, yeah, we're going to update this. We are going to implement... Oh, wow. I can save missile designs? 
Oh, that's awesome. That is truly awesome. I don't think I've ever seen that before. If that was there before, I was just being oblivious, but I suspect it wasn't. Now, as we've seen from our experimentation, four fuel tanks for one thruster. That will give you enough range for that thruster to burn continuously. It'll run out more or less at the 20 second point. We're not going to have two thrusters because that would require four fuel tanks. We are changing this system into a more of a long range attack system. Um, we are going to want the camera all the way back here. It doesn't really matter where the camera is. Uh, should I tell it to aim at hot things? Can I tell it to aim at weapons? No, that is a shame. I wouldn't mind it aiming at weapons, but that's fine. We will also have a augmented proportional navigation guidance. Should we also... We'll also have a one turn as well. Not going to have the pr target prediction, uh, position prediction guidance. Well, that one seems to go awry more often than not, especially with fast moving targets. But a one turn, as long as it puts us, the missile onto the course for intercepting the target it's meant to attack, the augmented proportional navigation guidance should guide it in on the, the correct um, path or angle of attack there. Especially if we can launch these missiles prior to a strike, just as a strike is initiating its bombing run. Shouldn't matter if they're fast or not. They should have enough turning uh, potential with two fins to turn into the strike as it's coming down and then just meet it head on. Hopefully. That is, that is the hope. I'm not sure if we're going to meet any strikes on our way to the fortress, but I wouldn't put it past them. The devils. Uh, fragmentation warhead there. We will have a narrow-ish cone of fragmentation. 60 degrees is fine. This one is 35, but that one's going to be changing to an explosive warhead. There and there. We want big explosions from this to tear apart, to tear a hole through the front of the armor through which the fragmentation warhead can then burrow in and do damage to internals. In fact, on that note, we'll reduce that to 40 degrees. There we go. So all of those missiles have now been updated. Hopefully it's going to work. Now, as for the laser, I was debating whether to build a laser on camera or not. Where I was going to build a whole new gun down here and then a large laser system up here, I was just going to build it and then show you what it was and then go over it building it in a in a later episode and actually you know pay attention to it properly and i might still do that this will probably be a very uh fast and dirty tutorial on building a laser but it should hopefully still do its job the question is how am i going to build in the enormous power requirements for it um you know what we could do Let's uh, strip the top off this for now. Let's uh, get that mirror line there. Enter into delete mode and just peel back the top of this construction. Okay, there we go. This will be our base. We are going to want to be raised slightly. Uh, we'll get one metal block to start everything off. Now, there are much more interesting ways of doing this, and, and like I said, I did have a plan to build a proper, you know, kind of, you would mount into the laser turret and then control it from inside, and it was going to look awesome. There's going to be lasers through the floor and everything, but now, now no. Multi-purpose laser. We will build a simpler laser for a simpler time. Uh, we want a laser connector, I would say, and... Hmm... Actually, let's move all of that forward one. I would rather have it just a little bit forward so I can do this. I would like to have the laser connector moving back, like so. We'll put the uh, mirror line back in. We'll bring the lasers out to about here. This is where the laser connector simply connects the multipurpose laser, which is kind of the, the business end of the laser and the laser coupler. Now the laser coupler is what you actually attach a laser cavity to. The laser couplers are pretty important in that it can have, I believe, up to as many sizes as are free laser cavities connected to it. But generally speaking, we're just gonna use one. Now, to make the laser, you have a laser cavity, 
The laser cavity is what actually puts power into the laser beam. It passes that to the laser coupler, which passes it through connectors or transceivers to the multipurpose laser, which passes that to a laser combiner. This is going to weaponize the laser. And then you attach optics and steering optics to that. In fact, because this turret, well, the turret is generally going to be turning to face its opponent. So I'm not going to use as many steering op optics. The steering optics basically allow a laser to, it guides the beam away from the direction the turret is actually facing. So for example, with the maximum, which I believe is six, it, once it stops getting bigger, that's the maximum. Yeah, we've hit the maximum. With this, we could probably aim over there where the cursor is facing right now without turning the direction of the laser at all. The laser could still be pointing straight forward, but we'd be able to hit something over there because the steering optics would be guiding the laser beam. But we're going to go with three instead. Now, what I want a lot of are just plain old laser optics. Now, these, think of these as... Uh, just sort of focusing lasers. They increase the accuracy of the laser significantly because otherwise the laser will roam. You'll, you'll aim at a specific point and it'll, it'll kind of scatter, almost like a shotgun really, only it won't be multiple beams, it'll just miss. Um, the, the laser optics will drastically improve that. Range and accuracy of the beam. Now, what's our beam like at the moment? We have got currently a continuous wave laser. There are two types of lasers, continuous wave and pulsed laser. A continuous wave is, as the name implies, just a beam, a constant solid beam. To get a powerful version of that, you need an enormous laser, absolutely staggeringly massive laser to get any decent damage or armor penetration or range out of it. However, if you pulse the laser, so instead of one continuous beam, it, it, it fires one sh it is still a beam it's it's not like a projectile you see lasers in in many games are uh, dumbed down beyond recognition to the point that they they are essentially um just uh, a bullet really that's made of light it travels like a bullet it is a bullet in for all intents and purposes it just looks red um but a laser is a constant solid beam but a pulse laser Instead of just turning it on and keeping it on, focus on the target, gradually trying to, to melt your way into it, a pulse laser just fires an extremely powerful beam for a fraction of a second. And that's what we're going to use, because it's going to make it much easier to build. And uh, I don't want to tax the engine too much. Right, so a Q switch will turn this into a pulse laser. It's not going to show that yet. In fact, if I just add a laser pump. Now, the laser pumps... Fill the cavity with, with power, basically. Um, that's what creates the, uh, the, the, the damage. But as you can see, the pulse laser damage is slowly ranking up. It's going to take time because these lasers are going to take a long time to fill the cavity with power. So if we add more of them, that'll increase the speed a little bit faster. There we are. Pulse laser damage, 120 AP. Uh, so, 120, an armor piercing of one, a range approximately 679. Now, we can add more and more and more of these, and it'll get more and more powerful. Uh, pull this back. There we are. One there. I could have done this a little bit better if I just locked the uh, angle, but we'll go with that. Now, the damage is... All this has done right now is it means it's going to fill up that damage faster. So, between shots... This will hopefully get up to full power. I'll uh, demonstrate that by jumping over here. And uh, where am I? Am I in the bridge? No. There we are. No. Damn it. Come on. Uh, we need to get up here on the laser. There we go. Now, if I set this up correctly, and we fire, notice how often the laser is firing there. Not particularly often. Uh, perhaps I could set this up to be a separate... Hmm. For the testing purposes, let, yeah, let's... Uh, no, no, come back. No, come back. Damn it, you. Stop being a derp. Uh, it's going to be one of those days. It's like a cat chasing its tail. Right, okay, we're going to set this up on, on weapon four. Now, the... 
AI control should still be able to control this as well as the turret, which is interesting. But they'll aim at different things. That is not necessarily the best thing. What we want to be able to do is to fire our laser whilst looking at this. Whilst in position where we can see that, so I can demonstrate what I mean. Hmm. I know. What we'll do is, if we pull that out, put that there, put that there, delete that. There we go. Not exactly what we want to do. But you'll notice my laser damage is 120. I fire, it goes down. But it's back at 120 before I fire again. So that's fine. We're going to be firing at full power. That's ideal. And the next thing we want to do is just, since we are already firing at full power, add some more Q switches. Each one of these will increase the firing rate. Right now, this is not one laser, by the way. There are two lasers, lasers being channeled through the weapon component, through the optics. They both fire at the same time. So it'll, it'll appear to be one, but there are actually two lasers firing, and I can show you that in a moment. Right, the pulse laser damage has gone down because uh, it's firing more frequently, as you can hear. There we go. Now, the best way to show off the fact that it is actually two lasers is I'll have them firing at different speeds. This one will be firing with one Q switch, that one will be firing with three, and if we come in here, as you can hear, that little da da dum da da dum every now and then is where the uh, two different firing rates are not synchronized and they're coming closer and, and further apart over time. But as you can see, we are firing at really decent power. Uh, I'm gonna keep this at um, we could just burn it out, really. I mean, this is going to require a lot from our engine to fire it this fast. What's the, the ba damage? 30. <laughs> That's not great. But fires like a machine gun. We can improve that, however. Worry not. Worry not. Right, we are going to need the mirror line. We are going to need either to extend the laser cavity itself, or... We can add frequency doublers, which will increase the frequency of the laser and as such increase the armor piercing value. We do want those. Uh, we'll add three of those. Now what is our AP up to? It is currently up to... An armor piercing is seven. Uh, if we add one more, it'll probably be nine, will it? Yes. So we would need one more on top of those to give it even more powerful power, but we're not gonna go for that one. We'll just allow it to be, oh, well, if we want to chew through the hardest material, that is metal, then we'll need it to be 10 or above. So we'll, we'll go for 11, just because symmetry demands it. Next, we will add the laser destabilizers. Placed in the cavity, the destabilizer will dramatically increase the energy use when firing, thus increasing damage. We'll add six of those in total. Now. I would have assumed that that was based on a single beam. If we look at this one beam here, energy 300 of 300. But they seem additive. For example, having this many laser frequency doublers, it's, it's counting both on either side. I don't have two beams that have an armor penetration value of six. I have, um, or rather two beams that have an armor penetration of five plus the one from the turret itself. I've got one beam that has an armor penetration of 11. I'm not sure about that. Uh, we need a bit more power coming in here, though. This is just not good enough. We want another one of you. So, we'll add another one. Uh, as for Q switches, yeah, we'll do the same again, I guess. Um, actually, we'll stagger that one, just for effect. And we'll build this out. This one is going to be more of a power-hungry beast, though. And we are starting to get low on on metal. Once we run out of metal, that is it. We're not going to uh, worry too much about doing any more. There we go. Let's uh, get that ready. There we are. And we'll add all of the pumps underneath here. Is that locked? No. Is it locked now? Yes. Okay. And finally, have we got enough metal for this? We are just going to have enough metal. 
Okay, let's see how much damage this can output now. 176 at a range of 3,313. Now, it'll be very accurate at that range, relatively speaking. I mean, it depends how many focusing um, optics I've put at the front. But we could add maybe a laser destabilizer. We can afford two of these. And that's it. This is our laser system. It does 289 damage with armor penetration of 11 at 5,435. Now, I had briefly considered adding shields to this. But, honestly, that is for another episode, I feel. That is something that we'll play around with when the time presents itself. But uh, not, not for this. And yes, I'm having to use wood because we're bloody poor. Uh, also, I really shouldn't be in here anymore. Let me, let me leave. I'm going to drop down here. There we go. Um, actually, I am going to set this up to fire on the same one as the rest of the turret. Just so that uh, the AI control doesn't get a bit derped out. And let's put ourselves nice and safely in here. There we go. Right, we're going to continue with the building and just build up the armor around it. It's going to be wooden armor, alas. But uh, beggars can't be choosers, I, I'm afraid. Not in this instance, anyway. Uh, I forgot the mirror line because we'd stopped building and then started building again. Damn it all. And, ooh, that's quite convenient. Can we do that here as well? No. Of course not. All right. And we'll just build this up over the top like so. Get some regular wooden blocks just to fill in the gaps. There we are. And almost done. Well, we may as well continue to build out this part of the armor as well, come to think of it. There's no reason not to. And there. Just fill out the back, and then we'll add a little bit more to the top, and then we are completely finished. It's not going to look amazing, but hopefully it won't matter. Hopefully it'll do amazing work, even though it doesn't look amazing whilst doing it. That is my, my hope. We'll... I, I, I know. I, I'll infinitely improve this by adding a little bit of sloping to the front. I mean, come on. How can you argue with that? That has is, that is massively improved this weapon. There we go. Um, let's use two meter sloping for this part. Ah, oh, fantastic. There we are. This looks much better now. It doesn't really. I'm just trying to convince myself. If I say it enough, I might stop believing myself. Uh, let's continue to fill this out. Uh, we should actually be able to just go across like that for there. There. We won't flash out the very top. I don't think. We'll just flash this bit up there and there. And wood block. Right, there we go. Our laser is complete. It's kind of <laughs> very much just bolted onto the top of my normal turret. But hopefully, this should make it incredibly dangerous. And as you notice, we haven't been attacked for ages. Um, one quick note. I've had to turn off the Fortress AI. Excuse me a moment, I just need to cough. <sighs> that was a bit of a long one, but uh, okay, um, we, I had to turn off the Fortress AI, it's currently just on AI of on, because if it's on combat, it tries to get to a resource zone, it just picks one and tries to get there, and it's really bloody annoying to have to deal with it when it's doing that. So, right now we have a decent enough weapon in my opinion, and I'll quickly give you a demonstration, uh, let's just fire, oh yeah, that looks good. Not as accurate as I would have liked, but, uh, okay, you know, it, it can do damage. It would have been great if I could add shields onto this, but we're just going to have to hope that we uh, attack our enemies from the right direction, that it's not going to matter too much. How high can that laser beam fire? Not as high as my cannons can, so it's going to have to engage at, at fair range. Maybe, maybe I should actually set this up with all of the steering optics for now 
Just because it's it's basically piggybacking off another turret, so it's not going to be as uh, useful as it would be otherwise. Oh, and I can't afford it, really. Oh, that's that's not good. Yes, they require a lot. Okay, well, uh, that's a big old nope on that one then. But on the whole, I'm I'm fairly happy with what we've got. However, I do need to make some slight adjustments. Uh, modifications rather. There we are. This needs to fire at much greater range. I'm gonna tell you to go ahead and engage anything up to 2000. My laser system can easily handle that and honestly the cannon probably can as well. It just won't be very accurate when it's doing it. As for you, I, there's one more thing that I want to test and that is how far these missiles go so I can adjust it. And there is a very easy way of doing this, as long as you're on the fortress itself, or, or on the vehicle and it's got an AI. You launch it, you hit caps lock so you're following it, and then hit C. I can see my distance from the AI, my camera's distance from the AI itself. So, roughly speaking, when this engine cuts, that's the maximum range of this missile. Okay, wow, 900, really? I'm actually quite impressed by that. That is much further than I would have expected. But we'll say 850, just to uh, be certain. Now, let's uh, have a quick look at the control in here. Where are you? Connected local weapon controller. No, that's not what I want to look at. There we are. 700 at the moment, we're going to pump that all the way up to 800 and, well, 875. There we go. Good enough. That is the new maximum range of our weapon system. And with that, I think we're ready to go out there and actually start fighting. Now, moving anything around in the, the map is a little bit different now, but I'm going to cover that in the new campaign. I'm not going to go over it too much here. There is one thing I'm going to do, and that is I'm going to put all of these forces into a single fleet. And yes, you're going to be able to rename things much better now, by the way. We'll do that later, though. But, uh, right, fleets. Can I not? Starting Fortress? I would like to merge you, honestly. Um, no? Is there no way to, to merge? I thought there was. Ah, there we are. Right, I want these two to merge together and this one to merge with the Starting Fortress. There we go. Now, the Starting Fortress should be the flagship, the F there. That is fantastic. Now, the Piranhas can move faster. They've got a speed of 6.5. The Fortress has a speed of 5. I believe that's the max speed of turbines, a uh, Fortress turbines. As a result, you really don't want to use a Fortress as a, as a main weapon. We did previously because it didn't matter that it could only move at 5 meters a second because I could instantly teleport between regions. Now, I'm going to have to drive this thing over there. And that is going to be really bloody annoying. We're going to pull all of these forces out of play. They are now basically a token on the map. This has been abstracted now. In fact, if we come out of the map, you'll see that all you see are wireframes. I'm still connected to it. Thankfully, otherwise I would be left behind. But uh, we're going to make our way over there. I'm not going to go over how this works. I'm just going to take us over there to have our fight. Um, so you can expect to see more about how all of this works in the first episode following this one, which will be actually dealing with the campaign anew, in which we are going to be dealing... See, I'm moving at five minutes a second. I can't speed up time, though. But... Um, in which we're going to be dealing primarily with fleets, possibly aircraft as well, because of course they're much faster. And speed is going to be a very big part of the new campaign. But um, I will bring you back when we are at our destination. I may possibly have decided on the way I'd have a little bit of fun and uh, pick on three enemies at the same time. Basically I dipped into each area as I was moving through to... Uh, make the current fleet that was there decide that it needed to defend its territory. So, uh, yeah, I've got three fleets about to converge on my fortress. This will be an interesting one. We've got a strength 15, a strength 17, and a strength 8. I have upgraded the fortress slightly because after fighting the enemy that was there, I had a bunch of metal, so I've uh, elongated the barrels of the guns and massively elongated the uh, focusing array 
on the laser and also added the three steering um, optics as well. So the laser should be much more accurate now. It does fire like a, a laser machine gun. It's glorious. Now, this is how it happens. They're not actually even present in the world yet. We are going to bring pretty much everything into play for this battle. They're not actually there yet. They're still forces out in the middle of nowhere. Let me bring up the UI. We've got some forces over yonder, some forces there, three of, some forces coming over there. Until they actually get within a certain range, they won't spawn into play. We can't attack them. I imagine this would be something that um, players could do differently, that they could bring their forces into play and just leave them there and engage at very long range. But until they actually join the battle, there they go. And my weapon's already engaging them. Let's uh, get down there and see what's going on. The piranhas should be making their way over soon. I strongly suspect the laser in our cannon is just going to annihilate these forces before the piranhas can even get a look in, honestly. Um, but as you can see, it's not, you know, enormously accurate. It is doing a, a fair bit better than it was before, but it's uh, still a little bit inaccurate. Uh, looks like you're changing direction. Wow, really? Can the laser and the cannon do different things? No, no, I don't think they can. Uh, I think that was just that the uh, cannon had already fired a bunch of uh, shells and they were still in the air once the cannon decided it wanted to focus on something else. But the piranhas are making their way in. Well done, you little piranhas. But these guys really are not even getting a look in at the moment. There's no chance for them to survive. They should make their time. That is my professional opinion. Okay, I'm a little bit concerned about you over there, though, being on the other side of a mountain when you engage. That would be a bit of a pain in the backside for me, because, uh, yeah, my laser can't go over mountains. I can't go through them either, which is, honestly, in my opinion, a design flaw. Uh, I, I think my, my laser should be upgraded so that it can shoot through mountains. But, uh, oh well. Now, we have wiped them out fairly easily. How about we check out where these guys are? Yeah, they're going to engage there. This one is okay, but we're going to quickly pull them and we're going to move into a slightly better position, I think. Let's accelerate time. These guys should basically follow us there. And, uh, ah, oh, damn it. Slow down, slow down. We have been blockaded. We cannot do anything once blockaded. When you're blockaded, you have to resolve the battle. And there's a cooldown on when I can pull them out of the fight as well. You're going to spawn on this side of the mountain, I hope. So you're just going to basically be uh, a boat stuck on a mountain. It's not going to be very good for you. And I don't mind. Uh, nighttime battle, eh? I approve. Let's uh, zoom over here and see how things are going for the enemies. Whoa, the moon moved fast. My god. This is lunar time dilation. I never thought I'd see it myself. You get told stories. Father passed down to you from his father and his father before him of the time that the moon will just suddenly accelerate through the sky. Right, where is the other enemy? They're probably going to spawn on the far side of us, but uh, let's have a look at how these guys are going. Oh, this fight isn't going well for you at all. Yeah, this it's going to end pretty quickly, I feel. Um, it looks like my weapon systems have decided to fire on something else, maybe? I can only assume so. Uh, no, no, they're, they're back to shooting on you now. Oh, no, actually, I think that's the piranhas. The piranhas, again, a little bit of a look in. Oh, well done, you. I was a little bit afraid that you wouldn't be allowed to fight, but no, no, look at, the, look at them go. They're so eager. Aww. Oh, I've got a phone call. I shall be right back. And I'm back. I'm sorry about that. I have been uh, disconnecting the phone. Oh, just taking it off the hook, really, when uh, when I've been recording. But I need to leave it on at the moment because I'm awaiting a call from a gas engineer because my cooker is broken. Damn it. 
I need it to be fixed. Post haste. I am hungry. And it doesn't do to leave Avak hungry. No, no, no. Uh, as much as you are very eager, and I appreciate it, you're very inaccurate. And I don't appreciate that. Just a couple of bullets into the, the ammo stockpile and this fight would be over. Come on, you can do it, little little guys. I, I have full faith in you. You could also be launching torpedoes right now. That's the other thing you could be doing that would be awesome and not taking forever. Just saying. But uh, you've got torpedoes. It's a boat. Oh, it's dead. Never mind. Well, oh, no, it's not. Damn it. Oh, yes, it is. Make up your mind. Okay, we win. Ha ha. Now, have I got enough time to... Uh, balls. No, I do not have enough time. It would appear. Where are the enemy? They, they have landlocked. You derp! Really? I hope you're enjoying yourself over there. You idiot. I think the AI needs a little bit of help with that. Honestly. Um, can I get you to move over there at all? Will you move over there at all? I don't think you will. Because I've disabled the uh, Fortress AI, the only time it can actually move is when I have it out of play. It's really quite annoying, honestly. But uh, I'm going to have to move it manually. This is going to take forever, though. So uh, we had our fun. I will bring you back when we are closer to our destination. Okay, we are just outside the Border Guard's fortress home, and we are being attacked by a Vanguard re retrofit, I think. Uh, strength 21, and the 21st Airborne, Strength 36. We'll pull these out, and then we'll hit the fortress when it's undefended. Now, I've made slight adjustments to the fortress that we will quickly have a look at. Namely... I've gone ahead and added shields. I'm not going to go over the settings too much here. We will uh, cover shields in the new campaign because I imagine I'm going to use them fairly extensively wherever possible. Now, the enemy are over yonder and our laser is already doing a fair chunk of damage. As you can see, I've upgraded many, many things thanks to the uh, metal that we've had. Um, this is more or less exactly the same as it was in the last fight. But uh, the shields are going to help. Now, the angle of incident is fairly important for shields. So I've tried to have them angled. That one isn't probably too good because it's only really got a high angle of incident if something hits it straight on. If something comes down in an arc, it's probably not going to deflect too well. You can choose between disrupt and deflect for shields. So you can deflect incoming projectiles back, I guess, or just straight up, or um, disrupt their path as they travel through the shields. Armor piercing rounds have a better chance of just punch, punching straight through the shields. So uh, it isn't guaranteed that they will be able to stop any incoming damage, but uh, they're certainly better than nothing. And it looks like our laser is having a good bit of fun over here. Let's uh, see if we can't get a little bit closer. I am sorry for the frame rate decreasing rapidly. Very rapidly, in fact. Uh, it's not so great. Too many balloons in the sky, it seems. Bloody balloons. Right. You're probably going to be going out of this fight fairly quickly, though the Airborne are right behind you, and I'm hoping to get rid of you guys before the Airborne get here, because that's going to be a fight I don't really want to take on with uh, existing boats. In fact, you know what? Let's... Uh, Piranhas, you are now in the fight. Come along. I'm going to need your help for this one, I think. We want lots of bullets. And our missiles are in the air. Oh, fantastic. They don't have missile defense. That is that is great news. They are just falling shy, though, of their targets. Interesting. Very interesting, in fact. Yeah, they come, though. There we go. Let's start taking this fleet out. And our missiles over there are doing huge amounts of damage to the things in the water. That is glorious. I approve of that enormously. Even though they're running sh shy on field, they just dip into the water and then act like torpedoes for a little bit. Well done, you. Well, mines, more to the point, I should say. All right. I would prefer if the uh, missiles would try and target the uh, airborne target, though, honestly, instead of the distant ships. But uh, uh, I guess you're doing a fairly good job over there. I, I, I won't 
hold it against you too much. You, 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 you've decided your own targets. It is up to you to decide your fate, not me. Even though I did build you, I suppose. Alright, how are our guns going? I'm not really sure what they're targeting. It looks like they're targeting the uh, distant vessels. Why they are prioritizing that over the, the giant airship, which is like right in front of them, I have no idea. But uh, I wish they wouldn't. Our two piranhas, however, are doing a good job. And they're actually launching torpedoes with the seams of it. Well done, piranhas. That is fantastic work. Fantastic work indeed. How is that ship over there doing? Not too bad. We've only got two enemies here. That one there, the paddle boat, which is... Actually, ah, oh, damn it. I'll be right back. I return, just as night falls. Very well. Have we actually taken out all of the enemy? Oh, the airborne units were here as well. My lord. And once again, I do apologize for uh, having to leave the phone on during this recording, but as I mentioned, I need food. Damn it. I cannot make food if my cooker is broken. Stupid gas cookers. Right, let's make our way over to the deep water guard fortress. And before you say I should microwave it, find a fish, a really big one, like a tuna, and slap yourself in the face with it. Repeatedly, for making such a suggestion. My lord. Right, I do own a microwave, but it's for practical things, like melting CDs. Right, okay, this is going to be the big battle. Hopefully, we go out in style. Or we win. I mean, hopefully we win, not go out in in style, but you know, if we're gonna go out, we should go out in style. Alright, okay. Let us hope that we don't get utterly annihilated by this fortress. Can I get the piranhas in and the main fortress now as well? Yes, okay. Let's see, how's this all going? Are we going to utterly destroy them or are they gonna destroy us? That is the question. They've got missiles incoming. That is not good times. You may notice that I loaded the piranhas first. There was a little bit of method to that. Uh, I, I feel a little bit cowardly, but um, I also feel like I'm not going to die immediately anyway. So, yeah, say what you will. There, there was logic to my, uh, to my choice there. The piranhas are small and fast and nimble. They, they can handle it, don't worry. How much damage have we done to that fortress? And my god, the frame rate is three. Uh, I... Uh, I suppose that in the future, when I'm going to be engaging in large battles with large fortresses, I will turn the graphic fidelity down a bit. Maybe right down to fastest, just to try and preserve the frame rate a little bit, because three. <laughs> if it's already three and I'm fighting one enemy, this is kind of bad, bad time for me. But uh, it looks like that fortress is actually hovering, so I doubt the torpedoes on the piranhas are going to do any good. But it seems that uh, our laser and gun have taken out the main weapons on that fort. Listen to that laser thrumming there. Fantastic. It is literally a little light machine gun. And by light machine gun, I don't mean a light version of machine gun. I mean a machine gun that fires light, obviously. Uh, it looks like we have actually... We may have already gimped the fortress from range with that laser. My god. Such power. I'm not sure I deserve it. I'm not sure anyone deserves this kind of power. No one can be trusted with this kind of long-range death. My goodness. I mean, cannons are all well and fine, but lasers? What terrible sins did we commit to have these things? What terrible sins will we commit once we've got them? No, now that we've got them, I suppose. And no, I'm not going to hold off on building them in the, in the new campaign. My lord, these have proven remarkably effective. 
I may just make an entirely laser fleet. No, I doubt that. I, I like missiles too much, and cannons for that matter, but uh, still, my goodness. You are missing a lot though, laser, I am noticing. Mm. Can't say I approve. I approve about your missing almost as as little as I approve about this terribly low frame rate. Hopefully, though, we will annihilate enough of this fortress to... Oh my god, look at the metal, 30,000. Um, enough of this fortress that uh, the frame rate will improve. Oh, really? It's going to cloud and rain as well. That's just like that's not just rubbing salt in the wound. That, that's rubbing shards of glass into the wound and then pouring acid on top. My frame rate can't handle this game. I hope you're happy with yourself. And it looks like the piranhas have gotten in close. They're a little bit annoyed that they were targeted ahead of the fortress. So uh, they're letting their, their frustration be known in the form of a hail of bullets. Uh, an effective demonstration of frustration, I feel. Not quite as elegant as, as a strongly worded letter, but certainly effective. All right, let's have, a, let's have a look. This looked like a city. Oh, man. I destroyed a work of art over here. Look at it. It's got pillars and walkways. I can only imagine that there were lots of NPCs scuttling around here, living a life, doing their, their things. I mean, the Deep Water Guard are basically pirates, so, you know, it wasn't wholesome things that they were doing. But still, I feel that we have ruined something beautiful. And, well, we're in the process of ruining it. We haven't finished ruining it yet. But I think it's fair to say we've taken away all of the teeth and claws from the Deporter Guard Fortress. This battle is ours. We're going to stick around, though. We're going to watch its, its bloody and inevitable conclusion. And the piranha's going to keep approaching. I mean, you're welcome to. You don't have to sit over there, guys. In fact, can I get the fortress up out of the water a little bit? I think the other piranha is kind of locked underneath it or around it or something. Yeah, let's, let's just bring this fortress up into the sky so it's not accidentally shooting the piranhas. That would be ideal. Let's keep taking it up there. Power is dropping a lot, but uh, that's fine. And of course, my camera is anchored to me in the boat, ultimately. So I'm rising with the fortress. There we go. That, 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 that's good enough. Wow. Unfortunately, quite a few of my shots are just bouncing off the thing, though, which isn't so great. And there are the armor-piercing shots that are bouncing off as well, which is, you know, doubly not great. But uh, the laser system is doing its job. Is this an engine? Or was that an engine? I mean, that's got fuel over there. Or maybe that was a stockpile. No, this is the engine. Okay. If we can break this, this place will probably tear itself apart just from not having enough power to run its turbines. Well, it looks like there's a secondary engine over there as well. I do like this design. My goodness, look at it. Just loads and loads and loads of cylinders. My goodness. Probably quite effective as well. But there are very many engines in here, so I'm going to have to do a remarkable amount of damage. It's not just break one thing and I've taken the whole thing down. It looks like I'm going to have to actually drop a lot of ordnance on it before I can really shut down their power. But uh, the laser's getting involved now, which is uh, all well and good. And the frame rate is starting to go up. Oh, happy days. Uh, it looks like it's going for the distant engine for some reason. I'm not sure why. Piranhas, will you please get over here, you stupid sots? I needed to break this thing. You've got loads of bullets. You're just leaving the main fortress to do it. That's remarkably lazy of you. I'm just going to say that right now. Uh, are there any repair drones still alive on this fortress? I don't think there are. And there's probably far too much... Oh, no, look. The corpse of one of the denizens of this sky city. Oh, well, kind of. Uh, it's quite low down, but... Uh, I mean, you're ugly as sin, but I'm sure your mother loved you. And I feel a little bit bad for killing you. You know, a little propeller and everything. Oh. Look at what we've done. We've become monsters. What about over here? Any more corpses of the slain? I mean, not that I want to see corpses of the slain. I don't happen to collect them. No, no, no. That's what I do on Eve. That's not what I do in From the Deaths. No. In Eve, though, yes. 
absolutely collect the corpses of the slain. Keep them in a hangar. And then every now and then when you're taking out an expensive ship and you're going to be going somewhere remarkably dangerous, put them in your ship. And then if you get killed, at least someone will have an interesting uh, story to tell. Well, I just killed this fellow named Nowak today and his ship was full of corpses. I don't know what they were doing. They were also well-oiled slaves, dogs. I don't know. And there was a Bible too. I am very concerned. That's what I hope they imagine every time they kill me. Right, well, I'm, I'm fairly certain we, we've got this battle. It's just a matter of mopping up the leftovers. So, I am going to claim this a victory over this entire campaign. If this was the normal campaign and we had a fortress like this, I would just basically keep increasing the power of the laser and the main guns, and i just move around destroying everything. Because my fortress would be able to teleport. It cannot teleport, and although I've been cutting out the long journeys, they have been long, even at 10 times speed. We are going to have to use an entirely different um, design philosophy for the new campaign. Ooh, his engine just came on. Is he trying to fight back? No, no, everything is breaking down. We have actually fully won. The fortress is, is disassembling itself. This is victory for us. But, uh, yes, we're going to have to approach the campaign from an entirely different um, design philosophy. And it's going to all be based on fleets. I'm, we're going to keep the starting fortress, at least until we've built a better fortress design to replace it with. But the fortresses are just going to be there to gather resources. But uh, given that the way the, the fortress AI just basically tries to move itself across land to the nearest resource zone, because they, they all exist in the same world now, we could make seed fortresses, which have automatic um, ship spawners on them. So that they will make their own fleet as they are en route to their next destination. So they'll basically build and replenish their own guard forces. That I'm liking. But the main part of the uh, new campaign will be a very large fleet that we will be taking out. And uh, hopefully adapting as we go. But uh, one large mothership class vessel, I suspect, will be the center point of our fleet, our flagship. And from that, we will build all manner of submarines and airships and all kinds of gloriousness. But that is the end of the Deepwater Guard, more or less. I mean, we would have to go around and kill all of their other outposts in the campaign in order to completely finish them off. But I'm happy with what we have done. That was us going out in a not blaze of glory in a triumphant fanfare but that really is it for this campaign the next video will either be a sciencey video or it will be a video starting the new campaign honestly laser i doubt we could have done this without you i suspect we may have taken a lot of damage in that fight even with the shields thank you very much for your participation in this battle but that is it from me i do hope you've enjoyed I hope you will be joining me for the next. My God, we've got 78,000 metal. That is crazy. But uh, until then, and as always, do take care.